What is going on guys? Welcome back to another chess lesson and in this video I'm going to be talking about the concept of king on the sixth and pawn on the fifth. So what exactly is this idea and why do we need to study it? Well this is essentially the position where as white we get one of our pawns anywhere on the fifth rank and above it whether it's directly above it or one to the left or one to the right in any of the three key squares above it we have our king. All right, so that's the position, but why do we care about it? Well, believe it or not, even though it may not look like it at first glance, if you can get your pieces to this position in white, you are guaranteed to be able to take your pawn and promote them safely to a queen. All right, so it sounds like it's definitely worth studying, and this position is actually one of the key ideas behind all king and pawn endgames. So how we're going to accomplish this is essentially what we would like to do is with our king, we would like to get him to one of these two squares. Now, if our king can get to one of these two squares, then that will mean that he will be controlling, in this case, e6, e7, and e8. Now, if our king is controlling these three squares, then we can safely march our pawn up all the way until it gets promoted. So that is essentially the rough idea, but let's go in and dive a little bit deeper and see exactly how we're gonna accomplish that. So in the first example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what happens when it is white's turn to move and the white king is directly ahead of the pawn. So the proper move in this position is actually just to take your king and sidestep it, either to the left or the right. It doesn't really matter. The chessboard is symmetric. So I'm gonna take this king and move it one to the left. Now the enemy king, this black king right here, it has three possibilities. It can move to the left, it can move to the right to f8, or it can move down at an angle to f7. Now moving to the left or right is essentially the same concept. Uh, so let's go ahead and cover that first. We'll say that the enemy king just moves one to the left. So now what we wanna do is we actually just wanna go ahead and take our pawn and move it up one from e5 to e6. Now, of course, the king doesn't wanna, you know, go away in this direction. It's trying to defend this pawn from promoting. So it's gonna go ahead and move back from d8 to e8. So it looks like the king is doing his job, but look what happens whenever we push our pawn from e6 to e7. So as we can see in this position, our king right here is controlling these squares, and a few more around it, but they're kind of irrelevant. And our pawn is attacking this square and this square. Now, from this king's point of view, it has to move. It's black's turn to move. It can't just say, mm, pass. So it's forced, essentially, to make a bad decision. And since the only square that it can go to is this one right here, then, I mean, its options are rather limited. So we're gonna go ahead and move the black king right there and at this point in time we don't want to move our pawn up quite yet what we want to do is we want to first move our king up and then it doesn't really matter where this black king moves we can just go ahead and promote to a queen now let me go back a few steps actually and say okay whenever we first sidestepped right here the king didn't just need to go left or right you can go ahead and go to this diagonal as well so let me, actually, I'll reset this whole thing. All right, so we're gonna move the king left and let's say the black king chooses to go down to this diagonal. Well, in this case, since our goal is to essentially control these three squares, because we know if our king can control these three squares, the pawn can safely march up, all we have to do is move our king up one. And from this point, the king can never go into this territory because it's protected by our king. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it goes here or wherever, we can just continue marching our pawn up until it promotes to a queen. Now in this example, we'll take a look at a slightly different variation where the king isn't placed nicely in front of the pawn, but it's actually one square to the left. So in this example, it's white's turn to move. So what is the proper play? Well, a lot of people, they just decide to push their pawn up, but that's actually not correct. Again, we are first trying to kind of push the king away from protecting these three squares. 
So what we're going to do first is we're going to say, okay, we're going to move the king to the right one space. Now, again, this is the idea that in chess, you can't just pass your turn. I mean, this enemy king is in the ideal position because right now it's controlling these five squares. And since it's controlling these five squares, our enemy king can't get to it. Our pawn, of course, can't promote to a queen if something's in its square. So this is exactly where the black king wants to be. However, since it's the black king turn to move, it needs to go either left or right. It can't go diagonal because, you know, it's being protected by my king. So let's just say we'll go left. It doesn't really matter. Well, in this case, all we have to do is we need to bring the white king up right here opposite of the side that the black king went and then once we do this we can see that our white king is now controlling e6 e7 and e8 so now it doesn't really matter where the black king goes we can safely march our pawn up to promote all right so that was simple enough when it's white's turn to move but what happens when it's black's turn to move well it's basically the same exact concept so in this example again the white king and black king are controlling these three squares but since it's black's turn to move this is actually somewhat of a disadvantage because it goes this way we go this way if it goes this way we go this way so let's just say that it moves to the right one we're just going to take our king and move it from e6 to d7 so now we position our king in an area where we already instantly have this pathway right there. And in the last example, just to show you guys all the different variations, we'll see when it's black's turn to move. However, the white king isn't directly above our pawn, it's actually to the side one. So just like before, the king has a couple options, left, right, down, let's say it goes to the left, we can just go ahead and bring our pawn up. Now, when the king attempts to block that pathway for the pawn, we bring it up one more time and force it into in, well, we really force it into making only one decision because our king, make those red. Our king controls these squares, our pawn controls these squares. So the enemy king is forced to move in this example to F7. So when they move to F7, before we promote, we just bring our king up and it really doesn't matter what they do, we promote. And now we see if the enemy king chooses to move down in one, all we have to do is take our king, move it up one, and it controls all these squares and safely allows our pawn to promote. So there you go. That is the idea behind king on the sixth and pawn on the fifth. Again, one of the major concepts behind all king and pawn endgames. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.